Hey guys, my name is Fai and today I'm going to be bringing you the top two champions in each role for carrying solo queue. So basically who you should be playing right now if all you care about is climbing elo. Now this video is only covering the top two and why they deserve to be here, but I do have a top five series on my own channel where I explain how to build, play and play against them if you're interested. So first up, we're going to be taking a look at the jungle role and these two are champions that Foxtrap and I chose together. Now Shivana has an incredible ability to control the pace of the game. She's a really fast clear speed, decent-ish ganks, but amazing counter ganks and can shut down the enemy jungler quite easily. So farming is definitely one of her biggest strengths and you're really going to feel it most mid game when you group up to team fight. The farm you've accumulated will mean that you're basically like a second, slightly weaker top laner and you can do a lot of damage still. Now firstly, Savannah does a lot of damage naturally, so you can just kind of build tanky items which makes it really difficult for an AD to deal with. Not only this, but by the time the enemy AD finally does put you on low health, then you can just double your weight and it's really hard to finish off the kill. Now ganks may not be the best because of her lack of CC and gap closer, but she's great at counter ganking. If they've already committed to a fight, then you can just run in and there are very few, if any, champions that can duel her one on one. Taking the number one jungle spot right now is Evelyn. So Eve has always been pretty strong, but there are quite a few reasons why she's such a problem right now. So let's just tick off the most obvious one first of all and talk about the vision changes. Pink walls are now visible and if your laners are paying any attention at all they should be able to spot where they're placed and clear them pretty quickly. This means it's really hard to know where Eve is and even if you aren't in the lane it makes them play more passive because you could be right there. The threat of being ganked forces teams to play differently and it's a whole new playstyle when you have to play against an Eve. Now secondly the new jungle items that grant gold mean that you can be more aggressive early and not really be punished for it. Now Eve can spend a lot of her first double buff duration ganking and even if she doesn't pick up a kill she can just spend a bit of extra time farming to catch back up. This kind of no risk style means that it's really hard to shut Eve down. So next up we're going to be looking at my main role that AD carries. So in second place now we have Sivir. Now her ult is really strong, she lanes decently well against anyone and has a lot of damage. After our recent nerfs, honestly most lanes are now a skill matchup because you need to hit more of your Qs to get control of the lane. With the reduced shield duration too, it means that you have to use it more reactively rather than a just in case. Despite this though, her real strength is her ultimate because you become really strong in 2v2 situations and also with ganks. Now in a 2v2 situation, if the enemy laner steps out of position at all, you can ult and catch them really easily. It's impossible to outrun her and Sivir packs a decent punch when she does actually hunt you down. Now it's also really easy for a jungler to be ulted into a gank and just makes her even more deadly. When you move this into team fighting phase, she can punish anyone who overextends, she can engage, disengage and it gives her probably the highest utility out of any AD. Now arguably the best AD right now is Jinx and she's just so strong. She's a really good late game and in my opinion that's her strongest phase but then she has ability to win lanes too. She has a great attack speed steroid on her Q, even though her base attack speed is pretty low, or she can have great range on AoE. Now when you combine that with an AoE execute ultimate and a root, it becomes a really deadly combination. Now Jinx does suffer from having no escape, and that means that she can be shut down in team fights and a lane phase quite easily. The increased range on her Q means that her lane phase is actually really strong as she can poke while the enemy comes to CS. She is going to eventually run out of mana, but in the meantime she does a butt ton of damage without taking much in return. Now in my eyes her W is more of a utility spell than damage since the nerf and it's really good for starting fights and setting up ganks. Now just how Sivir can speed up your jungler, you can slow down the enemy and allow your jungler to catch back up. So next up we have our mid laners and we'll start with Ziggs. Now Ziggs has great lane control, a great team fight, amazing burst and is a really strong lane bully as well. His passive and Q is a lot of his damage early and it makes trading with him extremely difficult. Now you'll normally be exchanging a lot of auto attacks in the lane phase but he's just going to auto attack you with the bonus damage and Q which will win the trade every time. The one big downside to Ziggs is that all of his abilities are skill shots and it means that you could potentially do no damage in a team fight. I mean it is pretty hard to miss that big ass ultimate but if you do then you probably lost your team the fight. So taking the first spot here is obviously going to be Cassidy. Now if you're new to League you probably won't even know who this person is because he's always banned but there is a good reason why. I do use this analogy all the time, but basically every mid laner has a weak point, whether it's weak laning, weak roaming, or weak scaling, but Cass doesn't suffer from any of these. He lanes really well after 6, he roams really well, he scales well, and he even snowballs really hard. His kit is a big part of this because he has a silence and an inbuilt flash with his ultimate, so when you combine everything together, he's like the perfect mid laner. The face roll playstyle that he has and the difficulty of shutting him down early is why he's always banned. 
So let's jump into our top laners next, and first up we have Shivana. Now some of the reasons why she is so strong in the jungle also apply here too. So she does a ton of damage with no items, she is extremely safe, she is a lane bully and she's a really strong team fighter too. Now one of her biggest strengths is that she does a lot of damage and it's mixed, meaning that it's really hard to build against. So if you build armor then her W is still going to hurt you, and if you build magic resist then her Q and autos are going to hurt you instead. And when you combine this with the fact that she can just build defenses to shut you down while still hurting you, it makes it really hard to lane against. And because she doesn't need offensive items to do damage, it's also very hard to completely shut her down. Even if you do beat her in lane, she's most likely going to outscale you by mid game and that's one of the scariest things about her. So the best top laner right now is going to be Mundo. Now the reason he is here is because he outscales pretty much everyone else, he reaches a point where he'll dominate his lane and his ultimate is really strong with the defensive masteries making it so hard to kill him. So to put it simply, mid game he's going to deal a ton of damage and soak a lot of cooldowns but his early is strong enough to get him even more items than he needs which makes him crazy strong. Your really early lane phase is pretty weak but once you get some ranks in your queue then you're going to start to hit really hard and you can probably honestly kill someone after landing a few cleavers. So last up we have the supports and I'm only going to briefly run through these as I think this is the role where honestly a lot of different champions could be here. So in general the stronger supports right now are playmakers. They are the supports that can initiate and have high impacts in the lane phase and team fights. Now these are two examples of what I mean right now and I'll run through why I've highlighted each one. So Leona has two forms of CC, she's naturally very tanky, she has a high impact ultimate and actually does a lot of damage with her passive. She can control the lane and punish the enemy AD extremely hard for being out of position. When you combine this with the incredible kill potential at level 6, it's hard not to come out on top after the lane phase. Defense is pretty cheap right now too, so once she does get ahead, she tends to become very hard to kill and that's extremely strong for team fights. Now Annie is very similar in that she can control and dominate a lane, but in a slightly different way. Now where Leona does it through crowd control being tanky, Annie does it through sheer damage output. Now in my opinion, Annie's kit is not even that good as a support except her stun, but it's the raw damage that she can bring to the fight that makes her so good. Now it's not really uncommon for her to be able to almost kill an AD in a single rotation with a couple of items and that's just really hard to deal with. You can then take that lead that she's likely to gain and bring it into team fights where she can still have a huge impact and really turn the tides of a fight on her own. So thanks for watching the video guys, please do like and subscribe to Fox here and if you enjoyed it then make sure you come and check out my own personal channel. I put out 3-4 to four videos a week and it'd be great to see you over there. That's all for this time so I'll catch you in my next video.